even if rusty. Kini mastakila ki henasoku. Ki mastakilum ki kurasonu. Sani mas figu ani nya senyahu. Hua frasin mai sadzu. Para bai putehi zan hu defendi. Ihenengi. Ihenengi. Ikotura. Ikotura. Ilenguahi. Ilenguahi. I airi. I airi. Ihanam. Ihanam. Sanitano tomorrow. Iren shaku, teratsu, kinazua stata. Estio fitma. Kihilu Biblia. Zani Bandarahu. Ibandaran. Guahan. Day and welcome to the second episode of Historian E. Islata, Season 5. I am Jolene Tovis, your host. In this episode, Polly Eric Forbes will return again with his annual Chamorro Word of the Week, and Senora Rita Nauta of Guampedia.com will take us into the Spanish era. E. Liguahi. The language is the focus of this year's Mess Chamorro series. We will sit and talk with the minds behind the Guam Department of Education's Chamorro Studies Division. In this episode, we will discuss the immersion of the Chamorro language. So stay right there as historian E. Islata continues after this. Welcome back to Historian E. Islata. I'm Jolene Tovis, your host. It was just last month that Guampedia.com released a book that focuses on women in Guam's history. Senora Rita Nauta of Guampedia will now share with us the story of a notable woman who helped shape the history of Micronesia. Buenas and half a day. In celebration of Tomorrow Heritage and Women in History Month, our team at Guampedia.com invites you to learn about women that have shaped Guam's history and society. Most specific societies are oral-based cultures. Their long histories committed to memory and passed on from generation to generation through storytelling and other oral performances. The practice of writing Pacific history, as we know it, began with the initial accounts of the first European explorers and missionaries in the region, all of whom were men, writing primarily about themselves, interacting with the natives. Pacific men and women were hardly mentioned by name, with women relegated further to the background or to just descriptions of their physical appearances. The imbalance of gender in historical representations is not surprising, considering that most literature about Guam history focuses on the crucial role of men, while paying little attention to the contributions of women. As a result, women are silent, barely visible, their stories in histories overwhelmed by the stories in histories of men. Through Guampedia.com and our new book, Famalao and Guahan, Women in Guam History, we are writing women's stories back into our island's historical narrative and collect memory. In this episode, we feature women's stories in what historians call the Spanish era, or from an indigenous perspective, Ifanataguizan Ihaani. This was a period in our ancestors' journey, or Hinanauta, when Europeans reached our shores and brought with them great winds of change. For nearly three centuries, life in the Marianas would be forever altered, with the introduction of people, new languages, and customs. These influences spanned from a new religion, to clothing and ways of cooking, to new plants and animals. 
Although the Spanish brought many changes, our Manana adapted, making each one unique to the Marianas. This evolution brought about what we know today as the Costumbrin Tsomoru. One of the few women chronicled during this period was Bartola Garrido, a Chamorro woman born and raised in Guam in the early 1800s. Not much is known about Bartola's life as a young person. Even her last name is unclear. Chamorro historian Polly Eric Forbes said she is referred to as Bartola Garrido y Taisegui in some writings and Bartola Taisepic y Delgado in others. Bartola stands out in Guam history as one of the first Chamorros to move to Yap, where she worked with the Spanish government and Capuchin priests. She played a part in maintaining Spanish control over Micronesia in the 17th century, standing her ground against opposing German forces and helping establish a Spanish colony in Yap. When Spain colonized the Marianas, they also claimed the group of islands they collectively named the Caroline Islands, Palau, Yap, Chuk, Kosrai, and Ponape. Spain could not maintain as rigid a colonial presence in the Carolines as in the Marianas, so other Western nations, particularly the Germans, saw these islands as available for colonization or business development. In August 1885, when the Germans beat the Spaniards to raising their respective flags to claim Yap, Bartola tore down the German flag and raised a flag of Spain's colors. She had reportedly sewn the flag herself and persisted to display the Spanish flag for several months during Yap's German occupation. Bartola recruited several Chamorro women from Guam to teach in Yap. Within a few years, other Chamorros traveled to Yap, taking jobs with the church or the Spanish government. Bartola had a gift for language and could speak Chamorro, English, Spanish, German, and Japanese, earning money as an interpreter. She was given the title of Dona and a lifelong pension by Spanish King Alfonso XIII for her support of the government and Catholic mission. Dona Bartola Garrido and her indomitable spirit will mark her as a woman from Guam who stood up against an entire German nation with fierce loyalty, helping shape the history of Micronesia. More well-known female figures from this period are found in one of the most treasured stories in the Chamorro culture, the story of Serena. A Spanish word deriving from the word siren, the story of Serena was likely borrowed and adapted from the Spanish. Our story, however, differs from other mermaid stories in that it involves the child-rearing responsibilities, especially that of the mother. In other stories around the world, the mermaid is a siren calling sailors to her. Guam's story is also about respecting one's mother and demonstrates the immense power of motherhood. It also involves the obligations of the godmother, Imadlina, considered essential to the growth of the child, especially on the spiritual level. Guam's Serena story about obedience to one's mother reveals part of the uniqueness of our history, that a woman can be an ordinary mother and at the same time an extraordinary powerhouse. So rather than a legend, our story Serena is a proverb whose meaning and moral is to obey your mother or else. If you would like to purchase a copy of Famalao and Guahan, stop by the Guampedia office at Yulji's Dean Circle, house number three, or get it on their website at guampedia.com. Be sure to catch next Monday's episode for a look at our leading women during the U.S. naval era. When we return, we will listen in on Polly Eric Forbes' Chamorro Word of the Week. Also, we will learn more about the Guam Department of Education Chamorro Studies Division Immersion Program. Each year, historian E. Islata is blessed with the continued support of Polly Eric Forbes as he shares with us all his knowledge of the Chamorro language. This year, Polly Eric will fill us with flavor. Let's take a listen on what Ma'asin means. Every day, all day long, our life is filled with flavor. Today's Chamorro word is one of them, Ma'asin. 
Maasin means salty. What would we do without asiga, the salt that makes our food maasin? Jesus said we are the salt of the earth, meaning we should be maasin to everyone around us, making us tasty and flavorful. When you're cooking and it just doesn't taste right, what do we need? Maasin. A little saltiness brings out the flavor of something. What do we do when we are given green mangoes? We look for salt to dip it in. The maasin goes well with the tart sweetness of the green mango. Almost every sweet dessert has a dash of salt. The maasin brings out the sweet flavor. Every kitchen table on our island has a bottle of soy sauce or ketchup. Many people put soy sauce on everything. That's how much they like maasin. Just be careful. Maasin is good. Maasin is necessary. But too much maasin is not good for the blood pressure. Maasin, salty. Sign of maasi, Polly Eric. Next week, Polly Eric will share with us the Chamorro word for sour. In this next segment, I sit with Senora Rufina Mendiola and Senor Jimmy Terria of GDOE Chamorro Studies Division to get their take on what immersion of the Chamorro language means for our children in the classroom. Welcome back to Historian E. Islata. Joining me is Senora Rufina Mendiola and Senor Jimmy Terria. And today we're going to talk about immersion and how we get our children to learn the language in the classroom. Um, let's start, start off with uh, what immersion entails. For myself, immersion is everything you hear, you see, you write, you read is tomorrow. Now, to, to be full immersion is to apply the four components of, of the language, which is the listening, the speaking, the reading, and the writing. I wasn't really full immersed growing up. Um, but it, for me, I found that it's important that I learn my language. So I learned it, and now I speak it um, fluently. I read it, and I write it. Um, well, as a teacher in the classroom, I only spoke tomorrow. That's the immersion part. Uh -huh. And I, they really taught that I don't know how to speak English because I refuse to speak any other language but Chamorro. Uh -huh. So during my years of teaching, um, five years that I told the kids that I don't know how to speak any other language but Chamorro, they really believed me and they uh -huh. learned so much. And you know, you just have to be an actor or an actress in their classroom uh -huh. for, for them to understand. So that's the full immersion in my part. You have to speak it, no other word but Chamorro. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, all right, how to, about you? Just to add to that, yes. Uh, and there are many effective ways of immersion. There's total physical response, which is using um, everyday commands and, and then growing from commands to sentences and really just staying in the language. That's, that's the basics of immersion, is really to stay in the target language. A lot of times people think that we need, to, we need to teach Chamorro uh, with English. And really, we, we don't, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't. And there are many examples, uh, like Senor was mentioning, that when, if we stay in the language, and I, and I used to, we share our thoughts all the time, and, and so the, the big question is, uh, if, if we need to utilize English in our teaching, then our lessons are incomplete, mm -hmm. because we haven't exhausted every possibility mm -hmm to stay in the target language. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's different forms of immersion. There's, because um, we've always advocated for our Chamorro teachers to stay in the target language. And of course there are time limitations, but there are other methods that we've been researching, that we've been um, trailblazing through and trying, to, and partnering with our partners in the community to push mm -hmm. a full immersion program where Chamorro language will be the medium of instruction. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's, a, that's also another uh, program that we can talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so again, f uh, to be immersed in, in our language and especially in the teaching in the Guam Public School is just to, to you know, be natural mm -hmm. because yeah. eventually the kids will, will, uh, will learn and, and then we need to like show a lot of applications. So mm -hmm. just that, you know, our teachers now are giving the, the tool to apply what they want to teach 
into different content. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. one, one title could, you can apply math, mm -hmm. and you can apply science, uh, social studies, health. Uh, those are some components and you know, strategies that, that the teachers use in their classroom to be effective in their teaching and the kids, they see it, they touch it, they feel it, and it, all, all the senses is applied in, in the language uh, part of uh, learning. Mm -hmm. And most importantly is to be engaged. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the quantity, it's the quality. Mm -hmm. So just something like one word can, can take, you know, like maybe 20 minutes where for kindergartens mm -hmm. that are taught mm -hmm. for 20 minutes. <laughs> one word, you can apply it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And then when the child learns that, you can add. So it's input plus one um, theory. Okay. You know, you add another word, or maybe you add a verb, mm -hmm. and those how uh, we became immersed in our teaching and the engaging of the teaching and learning for our students. All right. Now, I remember when I went to school, um, of course, we had Chamorro, you know, Chamorro class, Chamorro studies. Um, but it, it seemed like back then it was all about memorization. How is immersion different from just the basic memorization? Where, yeah, you do incorporate the English version of the word, the, you know, the Chamorro yeah. version of the word, and it's just repetitive okay. immersion. How is it different? <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, it's very different in, in terms of uh, how, uh, what, what your approach is, is because there's, there's, there's a natural approach where uh, you would utilize uh, regular uh, as much as possible a natural setting for language and then there's the uh, notional functional approach where you're able to utilize uh, your physiological mm -hmm. needs and so um, there's other forms too where there's TPR which is total physical response and so all these um, language methodologies so in order to be a very effective uh, teacher of a language you need to understand second language teaching methodologies mm -hmm. And, and you really need to grasp that because if you don't, you, you, tend, to, you tend to just stick with um, um, just audiovisual, I mean, I'm sorry, not audiovisual, but just audiolingual exercises mm -hmm. like, like you were mentioning. Repeat, yeah. repeat after me. Mm -hmm. But if so. you incorporate complete right. second language teachings and complete uh, follow through with your lessons and you stay in the target language, research has shown that uh, those are the best practices right. and we've been modeling with our teachers best practices we've researched so many types uh, we did a yeah. training a couple years ago it was uh, amazing on, 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 up, on unpacking our standards unpacking what are the best approaches because uh, what has what has uh, been utilized in the past may not be as effective as today and so we need to constantly constantly upgrade our teaching and seek the best uh, so, practices. So one good example is, let's say, a lesson on the coconut tree. So you can read a story about the coconut tree, you can use the parts, and then for cooking, for materials, for uh, survival. Mm -hmm. So all those things, so like a whole language approach. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you take one thing to teach, and then you, you just you know, include everything about that subject. Mm -hmm. to include the, the practices, the, the live, uh, food, sh uh, shelter, uh -huh. and clothing. Uh -huh. and, and then you just, from, from kindergarten, you just give them like three words. First grade, they have like five words. Mm -hmm. So in our curriculum, it's, it, they have, uh, for one, t one subject or one uh, topic, we, uh, the level of difficulty goes on as the grade, you know, it's, they it's higher. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if you learn something in the kindergarten, you know you're going to learn it again in first grade, but in a different way and with more words. Ah, I yeah. see. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you much. Don't go anywhere. Awesome. We'll be right back after this. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Historian E. Islata. Join us every Monday in March right here on this station to learn more about Guam and the Marianas, our history, our people, and of course, our Chamorro language. Biba Guam! Biba Marianas!